hey folks, it's your main man E, and I'm here at our training facility in Santa Barbara, California, and I wanted to do a little video today talking about dog socialization, and more importantly, dog parks and your dog interacting with other dogs. Oftentimes, we get dogs into our program and we're told they're aggressive or they're not good with dogs or maybe they have displayed some behaviors at the dog daycare that seem to be counter to the widely held beliefs of how dogs are supposed to socialize. But oftentimes when we have those dogs in a structured program like Sadie, come here Sadie, like Sadie here, we find that they're fine with dogs when there is a certain level of structure. And so I want you to think about something and this is just kind of an analogy. Imagine if your kid went to school one day and they were out on the playground and there was no yard duty. There was nobody being a referee when the kids were playing with each other. And if one kid pushed down the other kid, that other kid's gotta get up and push him back. If one kid bumps into the other kid and knocks him over and that kid's traumatized or crying, there's nobody who comes over and says, hey, look, like you need to apologize to him. You knocked him over, he's hurt. So whenever we're putting dogs into a social situation where there's really no clear standard of behavior, there's nobody there who has the wisdom and the experience to successfully manage the environment and manage the social interactions. Sadie, come on, Sadie. You'll get a dog like Sadie or Cooper or even Emma. Sadie, come on. Come on, Sadie, hop up. Good, Sadie, sit. Good. And when things like this happen, uh-uh, sit. She is gonna feel like it's her responsibility to set boundaries. Because either A, we don't have clear communication with her to be able to clearly say, hey, no, that behavior is not acceptable. Those are not good manners. Don't do those behaviors. End of discussion. Good little baby. Perhaps we inadvertently are introducing resources like petting the dog when there's other dogs around or pulling out treats when there's other dogs around. And when we're pulling those resources out, we're not being clear like I am right now. Hey, I'm petting Sadie. If anybody else comes over here, I'm gonna tell them, look, I'm petting Sadie right now. She's doing really good. This is really hard for her. So when we take our dog out to a dog park or we go to a dog daycare facility and we see what looks like a lot of fun, the dogs are running around, they're going crazy, they're knocking each other over, they're you know getting pinned down we always want to ask ourselves, is there a yard duty here? Is there somebody, hey, no. Like Emma. Emma, no, tell him. Ooh. Is there someone like Emma here who can effectively discipline the other dogs without scaring them and in a way that teaches the dogs that ultimately the humans are in control, the humans are communicating clearly and you don't need to worry about really much at all because the humans and the dogs that are well-trained and well-behaved, they are gonna set the tone. So it breaks my heart, uh-uh, when like this behavior will be happening and people will tell me, oh, it's okay, she's great with dogs. She just rolls over on her back when she sees dogs. And I'm saying, that's not good. This dog is showing that she's overwhelmed and either she doesn't wanna make a mistake and correct this dog, or alternatively, she's saying, hey, look, I'm scared. I don't wanna get hurt. I'm gonna roll over on my back. So the value of structured socialization, the value of having that master trainer who can take you out with your dog and show you what your particular dog needs and help you learn how to navigate these scenarios is really priceless. And if you're struggling with your dog in social situations and you have yet to find the right trainer or do that additional work that requires you 
mastering obedience around distractions like other dogs or mastering the ability to read other dogs body language I highly suggest that you consider making that investment and making that commitment to mastering the art of socializing dogs so that look at Sadie right here rather than have a dog like Sadie that we're convinced for her whole life she's aggressive she's reactive she doesn't like dogs man she's crazy I don't know it's just so mysterious she's so good with you Eric but then when she comes home like and on the street she's so crazy I really suggest that you consider making that investment to understand how can we have this for the rest of her life you know how can we have a dog that doesn't have to be anxious doesn't have to be worried and can even start expanding her social circle making friends learning how to play and stuff because at the end of the day we don't know what we don't know and a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing and when we just have a little bit of knowledge that oh my god our dog is this way but we don't really understand the vast array of information there is out there in terms of socialization we can start telling a story about our dog that may not be true and i'm not saying there's not dogs out there that are not social i'm not saying there's not dogs out there that just aren't good being around other dogs they use dogs 100 percent exist and i've personally owned dogs like that but even with those dogs that are non-social or really don't like other dogs they should still be able to walk down the street they should still be able to have a dog come running up to a fence all crazy or have a dog lunge at the other side of the street and they should be able to just walk on their way and ignore that dog and just enjoy their walk so as always folks we don't blame them we train them and until next time it's your main manny signing out